Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So in today's video, I'm actually just going to run through some of my programs that I use or apps or softwares or whatever you want to call them. I call them drawing applications and just talk to you a little bit about each one so that you know the strengths and weaknesses because a lot of people ask this question kind of over and over again on the channel. So I figured the best way would be to do a quick run through and just try to explain a few things. So I start with the biggest and the baddest in my opinion, Manga Studio EX. Uh, this is Manga Studio 5. Now it's going to be called Clip Studio. The only difference is Clip Studio is a digital download version. They're basically the same program, or they are the same program. Same layers, groups, uh, perspective tools, comic book creation process. You can have unified documents. This one does it all. Okay, so this thing has all the bells and whistles. I don't think there's anything that you can't really do in this program. Uh, everything from scene creation and you know perspective guides for trying to draw little techie stuff like his little chair in the background there which I struggle at and suck at but I'm just I'm, I'm gonna get through it you can do word balloons lettering all that so basically this program will do it all penciling inking digital painting it's actually one of my favorites for digital painting uh, sketching is really nice I'd say the sketching is a little bit lighter uh, subpar than than say like Procreate or, or sketchbook pro even but still pretty phenomenal sketching. The inking is the best here. Still just hard to beat. And they have an app now for the iPad, which is amazing. Uh, and it does really well as well. So you get this kind of ability to synchronize your files and go back and forth. Pretty neat. So all in all, if you're looking for like something that'll do one and done, it would be this one in my opinion. Uh, so with that, let's segue to the next one and talk a little bit about that. Okay, so now this one is Sketchbook Pro. Now, to me, Sketchbook Pro, the greatest strength of this one is kind of like uh, ease of use, but really the pencils come out just very natural in this one. Uh, it's actually still one of my favorites to pencil in. I pencil more in Procreate now because I can take it with me on the go, and I love sketching on the move. Uh, and I don't like Sketchbook Pro's app for the iPad. It's not as uh, conducive or whatever fancy word you want to try to use there but it's not as cool I don't like it but I, I do like it here I love it here it's uh what's really neat about the workflow of this the way they've organized the tools and everything it's very like streamlined it's very easy and uh you, you don't got to think too much about it the architecture or structure of it isn't uh gaudy and hard to understand and complex I will say Manga Studio 5 or Clip Studio Paint can be a bit complex but it's because it houses so much it has the ability to do uh, you know multiple documents side by side and move the windows around just you can really customize the interface with this one it's kind of what you get right here it's just about drawing and the the tools are just kind of off to the side you can move them around but there's not a whole lot that you can do with customization the inking's okay I'd say the inking is pretty good actually uh, in this one but you do have to modify the brushes just right you know you can go through here and I you know you know if you follow the channel I make brushes and share them on almost every uh, program I use. Uh, the pencil brush works right out of the gate. You don't have to do a whole lot to that, uh, if anything. So this one has the best drawing and again, the best ease of use. And it's also pretty affordable. It's a monthly cost of, I think, uh, it's not enough to really think about. I got three bucks, six bucks a month, something, but I think it's three. It's, it's pretty cheap. Um, so you always got the updated version for that. Now I know a lot of people don't like that and they just want to buy it outright. Now I will say with Clip Studio Paint and Manga Studio 5, uh, last time I bought it, it was a couple hundred bucks. So you're going to spend a, a few more uh, bits of coin on that. But again, it's a, it's a one and done kind of solution where you, with this, you might want to maybe do something else for your digital painting. I don't know. I've seen people do some pretty amazing art uh, just with Sketchbook Pro uh, all across the board, you know, as far as like penciling, inking, digital colors, all that. Uh, so that's kind of my take on this one. Uh, let's move on to the next. Okay. And so now Photoshop. You guys are probably like, what's Photoshop? I've never heard of this thing you call Photoshop. Obviously, everybody knows of Photoshop, but it's, it is fantastic. People, like, it's the one they love to hate, right? It's the big brother and the one that kind of runs the game for a lot of industries. Uh, commercial art industries is pretty much, you know, top of the game. But people don't like the monthly subscription model. I get that. Uh, I will say something I probably should have started this video with. The reason I have all these is because I make my living as a digital artist. Yes, I do a lot of teaching and course creation and brushes and all that, but I'm a digital artist and I make money with this stuff. So it, you know, it's a write-off. So for me to have, you know, 60 bucks a month for Photoshop and six bucks a month for Sketchbook Pro or whatever it is, and you know, to buy these things is a deduction. So I do justify it with that. And I do like to stay current. I'm a big tech fan. So 
to me, it's it fulfills a need. You know what I mean? And I share this content on YouTube, so I gotta I gotta know what I'm talking about, and I gotta have updated versions. But I know a lot of people frown upon subscription model type situations like this, so I just wanted to throw that little disclaimer out there. But it is great. Uh, it costs for a reason. It does it all except for perspective guides. You got to kind of, you know, do your own perspective guides and things so it doesn't do that like Manga Studio does. But digital painting is probably the best in this in, in a lot of ways because you have so many different things as it pertains to, you know, like uh, masking and blending modes. It, it does pretty much all of them are copying Photoshop. You know, Photoshop was really the first one to do all this. So in a lot of ways, it has all the bells and whistles and it's kind of already understood that it's all there where the other ones you got to maybe figure out some workarounds I, I noticed that when i started studying clip studio paint the one thing that uh photoshop still has that i don't think any of them other than photoshop has is liquify and i use it a lot so like say i'm working on let me just merge these down Ooh, man that's a big different Ooh, that's like makeup no makeup right but anyways, uh, you know, as I'm working on something like this, I'll select an area and I'll go filter, liquefy. And there's a lot of things that Photoshop does that the others don't. But this is a big one, especially for me, because I always struggle with symmetry. So I'll be like, oh, I want to move her eye around, give her like a little funky eye. and So I can do that, you know, no big deal. Funky eyes, bam. No, I'm not going to do that to her. But liquefy is very, uh, you know, useful. I'll just put it like that. It's it's really, really useful. Like, and there's a lot of cool features in here uh, besides that. But Again, you're going to pay the heftier price. The good thing about it is if you're working in the industry standard or you're working with other professionals, it's a little bit more seamless because there's so many file types and everybody understands Photoshop, so it's just kind of more fluid. Uh, that's what kind of forced me to have it, you know, doing storyboards and commercial graphics. I was, I was able to do this, or I had to kind of have this. And then also you can do a lot of design elements in Photoshop. It's very conducive with uh, designing. I, I did a lot of logo design, stuff like that. So there are reasons you pay a little bit more for this, but again, you know, you got to kind of get to a level with your art production and things like that. If you're a digital artist, whatever, where you're thinking about write-offs, you know, because one of the good things about paying a least amount like this, say 60 bucks a month for this one, you, you get to make a full deduction on that. You know, and I'm not going to get all tax stuff like that. It gets a little fuzzy, but at the same time, that stuff does help out. So be aware that, you know, that's one of the things that you kind of have to look at when utilizing these programs. Uh, first, you got to make sure that obviously it makes you over 60 a month or what's the point, right? Uh, so that's that's kind of the benefits here. You know, there's a lot of things to talk about. I'm not going to get into all the tools because Photoshop is so vast. Obviously, I've already got tutorials on Photoshop and things like that. So now let's head over to Procreate. Okay, so now for Procreate. So, uh, you know, if you watch the channel here again that I do a lot of Procreating. That's like my thing. It's a little bit of a hobby of mine to Procreate. But no, I love this app. It's fantastic. It does everything. You, you do have to figure out a few workarounds. It's got an amazing brush engine. The pencils are one of my favorite. Like I, I think it's a mix of the pencils are really nice and they, they feel natural. But also, I just love the ability to be mobile and like sit in a coffee shop and draw my sketches. And it, it helps motivate me and keep me a little bit more um, ideas flowing, I guess. You know, because if I sit in my studio too long, I just go nuts and I want to punch things but uh, so Procreate is pretty neat it's like a I think $7.99 or something last time I checked uh, it is a one-time purchase which is nice it's an app so it's not as loaded as like Photoshop or Manga Studio Clip Studio Paint I would say it's every bit as as effective as Sketchbook Pro though if not more so um, and then I would say more so because like I said I prefer this especially the app version I use this way more than I use Sketchbook Pro and I have that uh, Sketchbook's app on here as well I just, I don't know, something about it's a little bit clunky. W one thing I really like about this is it's very fluid. Like, as you move the screen, it moves instantaneously. There's not a lot of lag. There's no lag with the brushes. Uh, lots of great options. It records video as you're, as you're drawing on this, which is fantastic, especially for people that, well, like for me, I'm a content creator, so it's big for me. But then even if you're somebody looking to get into it and you don't really know how to work a lot of video type stuff or whatever yet, you're kind of getting ready to do that. This is a great way to get started because it help, it facilitates that process. It's, you know, it's doing it for you and you just export the video. There are a little bit of bugs. I've noticed the occasional loss of video transitions and, and portions of the video, but not, not too bad. Uh, the drawing, the inking, even the coloring, everything is here. Uh, so this is a fantastic option for a low price. 
Uh, but you do have to have, like, say, an iPad Pro and, and be efficient with that or an Apple Pencil or a stylus that is maybe not the uh, Apple Pencil but that you're still pretty confident with. Uh, I, I always tell people you can make anything work given the right amount of time and dedication. Uh, I've seen some amazing, amazing art with uh, regular iPads um, and people finger painting. I mean, you can you can do it. It just how much time do you want to dedicate to it? Uh, how much are you uh, willing to you know develop yourself and, and bridge the gap? Uh, the good thing about the Apple Pencil is it just kind of works. You jump in, you start drawing, painting, you're good to go. Uh, so that's Procreate, and again, this one's really great for the price point and uh, kind of a you know one size fit all. It does it does a little bit of everything, I think. So uh, I'm pretty happy with this one. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into what programs I use and a little bit of why. And I'm going to tell you one last thing in closing. So basically, I find myself painting the most my digital painting in Photoshop. I don't know why it just seems to flow a little bit better. And if I find myself struggling, I kind of go there. Uh, for digitally painting. I definitely use Photoshop more, like I said, for logo design, any kind of design work or image editing. Uh, now, as, as it pertains to drawing, and not so much inking, but definitely drawing on the go, it's going to be Procreate. Uh, I just tend to draw more in that program. Again, the, the ability to move around is big. It just seems to, to react really well with the drawing process. It feels the most natural. For inking, no comparison. I, I can do it in Procreate. Uh, it always sounds funny, but I can get it done in Procreate, and then I find myself using Clip Studio Paint, Manga Studio Five, the most for if I really want tight inks and I want to ink the fastest and get the really nice clean inks that I'm after. I find myself going to that program, uh, and then as it pertains to drawing on the desktop. I'm gonna to have to give that to Sketchbook Pro. So hopefully th that's why I had to bring you four different softwares and kind of explain this because they each kind of have a little bit different strength, you know, and then you can go down the list and go, well, can the other one do this? They can all do the other components of what the other ones uh, do better, uh, but you may have to develop some workarounds and you may be a different type of artist than me, so you may not even feel the same way about them, but this is just my perception on it. And you know when I when I share these videos, I just want you to know where I'm coming from. So when people are asking me like, what programs do you like and why? That's basically it. Uh, and then as it pertains to price, again, you're gonna have sixty dollars a month for Photoshop. That's gonna change, you know, whether or not, uh, you know, depending on the time you're watching this video, obviously, it's gonna probably go up. I don't think it'll go down. And then uh, you're gonna have uh, Clip Studio Paint is I think still a one-time purchase, but it's probably gonna switch over to a subscription model. They've already been doing that with the app. A lot of people are pretty frustrated with that. It's like 12 bucks a month for the app. And Procreate is a $10 price point and a one-time purchase. So really probably the best bang for the buck in the sense that it's a one and done price. You don't have to worry too much. Now, if things start changing and they start going with more subscription-based models, which I'm pretty sure that's what they're going to do, unfortunately, uh, then you know, you're going to have to factor that in as well. So thanks very much for watching this video today. I also want to thank everybody that's been contributing to the channel and commenting to other people's questions. That really helps out because as the channel continues to grow, I can't respond back to everybody like I'd like to. So I really appreciate that added effort. Uh, it's really nice to see everybody kind of come together and help each other out. That's really the great thing about the community that we're creating here. So as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.